It's commendable how far Formula E has come as a sport in its short history. Not only has it overcome all the skepticism and ridicule it faced in its early days, but it's also carved out an interesting niche for itself where many of its detractors suggested that none existed. However, like all forms of motorsports, it's not so perfect, and some rough edges still need to be smoothened out. One such shortcoming is the huge and unnecessary role the front wings have played in deciding crucial moments in Formula E of late. Let's elaborate on this point. One of the unique and special things about Formula E is how close the racing is. Part of this is because of how evenly matched the cars and drivers are, and the rest of it has to do with the unique track layouts used in FE. Tracks tend to be quite narrow, allowing for the inevitable contact between cars every now and then. In fact, most people who watch a Formula E race for the first time are amazed at how the drivers manage to thread themselves through the narrow confines of the track while fighting intensely for position without ending up in a huge pile of carbon fiber. However, one literal weak link in all of this in recent times has been the front wings. Even small incidents have resulted in major problems for the drivers. The latest of these took place at the finale of the ninth season in London. During the first race of the London EP round, Porsche driver Antonio Felix da Costa lost a podium finish after earning a three-minute penalty. This was very disheartening as he had started 17th and had valiantly fought his way up to second. This podium would have also been significant for the team. Porsche would have been within a point from the top in the team's championship instead of ending up 27 points behind for the final race as a result of the penalty that put da Costa outside the points. Now, those who saw the race might be wondering why we're talking about da Costa here when he clearly didn't have any front wing damage. He was given the three minute penalty because of insufficient tire pressure, and da Costa's revelation behind the reason for the drop in tire pressure is quite interesting. He blames it on a slow puncture caused by debris left all over the track. I don't have much air in my tire, I'm nursing the car home. You have Rene Rast driving around with a broken front wing for four laps, hitting every curb, putting debris all over the track with pieces of carbon. An even more significant incident that involved the front wing was obviously that of Nick Cassidy in the same race. A relatively minor tap into teammate Sebastian Buemi's car ended his race and his championship chances, as we saw his front wing rip off and get sucked under his own vehicle. The pertinent question then becomes, why are the front wings on these current FE cars playing such a huge say in who wins and loses races? Well, we need to look back to the relatively early days of the sport to understand why. When Formula E was envisioned, the organizers knew that there would be a lot of close quarter racing, which meant that there would be a lot of contact. If the cars, especially the front wings, were too fragile, the cars would simply not last an entire race. The only way drivers could finish a race would be to tiptoe around each other, which would make the races boring. To mitigate this, the front end of earlier Gen 1 cars were built slightly more robust. Unfortunately, the cars ended up being too tough, which meant that drivers could bang into each other with reckless abandon and the cars would stay mostly unscathed. This led to a number of incidents where drivers just pushed others around, giving rise to ugly racing, which wasn't something Formula E wanted or needed in its formative years. Throughout the coming seasons, they made a handful of minor changes to the wings, but mostly for looks. In 2019, driver Andre Lotterer publicly advocated for the cars to be made more fragile to encourage clean racing, and by season 7, then incorporated the more fragile self-punishing wings. The system worked, but a bit too well, as many believe the troubles they cause outweigh any advantages they bring. There are plenty of examples of this to name a few. Nico Muller's crash in Portland, when a piece from his front wing came loose and he drove over it. Pascal Verlein suffering substantial front wing damage after light contact in Rome. Dan Tictum in Monaco, and then also in Rome, and the list goes on. To make matters worse, the rules have made the penalty of suffering a damaged front wing even more detrimental. Take the example of newly crowned champion Jake Dennis in Mexico. He had to go through the most crucial parts of qualifying with no front wing. He had damaged the wings earlier, and the session was taking place in Park Ferme rules, meaning he wasn't allowed to change the wings. Even though Dennis scraped through eventually, the way the rules were applied were quite ludicrous and didn't make any sense. So where does this leave Formula E? No sport is perfect, but what Formula E needs is the ability to learn from its errors. The front wings of the current cars are just a bit too fragile in our opinion. 
They need to have more structural integrity, but not as much as the previous generation cars. A happy middle ground needs to be found, where the drivers don't have to end up suffering massive damage at the slightest touch, but are also unable to use their cars as battering rams. The rules need to be updated as well to prevent injustices like the ones suffered by Da Costa and Dennis. Formula E has a great track record of being unafraid to bring positive change, and hopefully it won't take them too long to right these wrongs as well.